Bless the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Bless the Lord, everybody. The uh, 34th Psalm says, I will bless the Lord at all times, y'all. Not just when things look good, not when things feel good, but at all times, y'all. Is that all right? Yeah. All right, everybody had a great week this week? Yeah. Absolutely. Good morning, Newburgh Church of Christ and Newburgh Nation. Whether you're in the building or whether you're online with us, we welcome you here today. As always, you know me, I like to do a, a couple things. I want you, everyone in the building to pull out your phone. And uh, all together, we're going to hit the like button. And after you hit the like button, go ahead and hit the like button again. Hold it down and hit the love button because we just more than like the Lord. We love the Lord. Is that all right? All right, well, I want you to hit the share button as well. And go ahead and go to the comment section and say that any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Is that all right? Y'all know that song? Any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Any way you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Well, any way, any way you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll, I'll be satisfied. Well, any way, any way you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Well, any way, any way you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll be Lord, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Well, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll, I'll be satisfied. Well, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Well, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Well, said I came. Anyway to Jesus, anyway, just as, as I was. Well, I was sick and I was wounded and I was worn anyway, oh Lord. But I found, I found in Him, I found a rest, resting place. Well, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Well, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Well, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll, I'll be satisfied. Well, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Well, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, Lord. And we cannot understand all the ways that God will lead us to that blessed promised land. But who got us with his eye and will follow till we die? Well, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll be sad. Well, That's it. Oh, Lord, I'll be sad. Well, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll, I'll be sad. Well, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll be sad. Well, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll be sad. Well, sing a maid anyway, sing grace. Well, how sweet, sweet the sound. Well, let's say anyway, a ranch, a ranch like me. Well, oh Lord, see church I once, I once was lost. Well, but now, now I'm found. Well, Anyway, you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Well, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Well, anyway, 
Amen. Bless the Lord. Any way he blesses us, anybody testimony, any way he blesses us, I'll be satisfied. Amen. I'll be followed by Zion Wild. verses 14 through 21. Once again, that is 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and we'll read verses 14 through 21. And it reads, For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, Because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body. It is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members, but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. I've read for your hearing 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 through 21. At this time, let us prepare our minds for prayer. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. The heavens declare your glory. The skies proclaim your handiwork. Yes. O oh Lord, you are holy and righteous. Yes. Yes. 
You are magnificent, God. You are wonderful. You are great and greatly to be praised, God. And now today we together lift up your name. Father, we are ever so thankful for all the many blessings of life you give to us on a daily, on an hourly, and on a minute-by-minute -minute basis, God. We are forever grateful for the gift of the Holy Spirit, God, for the sacrifice your son Jesus gave on the cross for us, God, so that we might be free from sin and may one day be able to call heaven home. Heavenly Father, please forgive us if we have sinned against you. Renew our zeal for you, God, if it has grown cold. Father, please bless the speaker of the hour as he proclaims your word to us. Help us not only to be hearers of your word, but doers as well. Father, we love you. And we ask this prayer in the name of Jesus. Let the saints say amen. amen. Good morning, good morning, Newburgh. As we continue through our service, uh, the next song we'll be singing is Let Us Adore. Word should be popping up shortly on the screen. <laughs> Thank you, sister. All right. Let us sing. Let us adore, Let us adore the ever-living God. There is me. 
on the edge of blue. A God concealed from human sight. He tinted skies with heavenly hue and framed the world with his great mind. Come on, brothers. There is a God. He is a
that you're not here by accident, but you're here by God's divine design. He's brought you to this place to experience this worship and to fellowship with these people. I'm just glad I'm saved today. I don't, I don't know about you. I'm, I'm just glad and happy I'm saved. All the violence, all the wickedness, all the corruption that we see uh, every day, kids dying, rappers dying, famous people dying, normal people dying, everybody, people in this world are dying. And so when we have an opportunity to be here, and I truly mean this, uh, beloved, when you understand the breath that God gives you, don't take it for granted. And to be able to have your wife and your husband, some of you have your parents in here, amen, somebody, and your children, it's just an awesome time uh, in the Lord. Beloved, we're approaching homecoming in a couple weeks. We want you to be mindful. We'll say a lot more about that uh, in the announcements, but we're, we're going to have a hallelujah time uh, during that time of celebration. And harvest time is going to be next week. I want you to rise and stand to your feet, if you would and could, as we begin to reverence the reading of God's word on this morning. We certainly want to thank Brother Chuck Richardson for the wonderful job that he did in teaching our adult Sunday school class on today. Amen. Amen. Uh, we thank God for him today. And we want to thank all of those who were able to come and be with us for the adult Sunday school. Thank God for the rotation of brothers who are excited about teaching God's word, amen. amen. And I'm thankful for those who are excited about hearing God's word. Is anybody excited about the word of God on today? All right, I got one worshiper on the front row right there. He about a year, how old is he, a year old yet, two years? Zaire, amen, somebody. So if y'all don't wanna shout and say amen, I got a little two-year-old over here. He gonna give me all the amens I need. Don't let him out shout y'all today, amen, amen, amen. Thankful to God to have him today. Reading from the New American Standard Bible, uh, I want to read, um, we've already had 1 Corinthians 12, 14 through 21 read uh, into your hearing today. I want to read uh, verses four through seven of the same chapter. I want to thank Brother um, Trace Walker for the beautiful way that he read those passages. And let's read the Bible. Let's read 1 Corinthians 12, uh, verse 4 through 7 will be enough to give you some context. And we'll see if we can explain Paul's thought to the Corinthian church. If you need a blessing this morning, shout, speak, Lord, speak, Lord. for your servant is listening. Servant is listening. Amen. Amen. Please pray for me silently and flank me with your prayers. The Bible says, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. Last verse. But to each one, listen closely, church, is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Beloved, that concludes uh, the reading of 1 Corinthians 12. Four through seven, I want you to look at a neighbor, find a neighbor that you like, find a neighbor that you love. I want you to open up your mouth in just a moment and use those pearly whites, whether they are the original ones or the ones you bought. <laughs> and if you don't have no teeth, use your gums. Smile enthusiastically and say, neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh neighbor. Church members, Church members. matter. Amen. Thank you for helping me preach. You can be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Beloved, it was in January of 1977 uh, where a television series appeared on ABC called Roots the saga of the American family. It was a eight part series that was written by no other than Alex Haley, who chronicled his family's experience through the West African diaspora when the slaves were brought over to the Western world. In this series, you will find that his family originated from Gambia of Africa. There is a 
actor to whom we know from the sitcom Good Times by the name of John Amos that played Kunta Kente when he was an adult. But the problem with Kunta Kente, beloved, is he kept running. He kept trying to escape. He would not allow himself to be called a name by the name of Toby from his Caucasian slave masters. He believed that his name was Kunta Kente. He wouldn't listen to nobody. He wouldn't socialize with nobody. And he tried to run to escape being enslaved. The fourth time that he ran, he was caught uh, by some slave masters and they gave him two options. They said that you could be castrated. He said, oh no. Or they said that we will chop off your foot. And so, beloved, they chopped off Kunta Kente's foot. And then once they chopped off his foot, he was no longer able to run. He was no longer able to move as with the level of rapidity that he had once moved with. He was no longer able to escape slavery because they chopped off his foot. Somebody shot his foot. And when you talk about the foot, the human body has 206 bones. You come with 32 teeth, 15 feet of intestines, 78 organs, five of which are vital to your survival. Heart, brain, liver, kidneys, and lungs. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, notice what will happen if one of those vital organs goes down. It will indeed affect your movement. You have five empirical senses. You have hands to touch, a tongue to taste, eyes like binoculars that help you see, ears so that you can here, a nose so you can smell the macaroni and cheese. I need a witness in this place. And God has blessed us through the human body to possess all of those attributes. But the problem was, when you look at the human body, if there are issues with the heart, it will slow you down. If there's issues with your lungs that help you breathe, it will slow you down if you have Issues with your kidneys, many of you who are on dialysis can understand this. It will slow down your movement because if one area of your body that is vital for the vitality and movement of your body goes down, it will affect your movement. And I have come to tell the Church of Christ today that not only will our human bodies teach us a lesson, it teaches us a lesson about the body of Christ. Because unfortunately, throughout this perilous, painful, pitiful pandemic that we've had over the last 21 months, we've unfortunately suffered the severing of some amputations. Because we are members of a body. The word member in the Greek, melos, really means a part. It is a part that is belonging to the whole. And if we don't understand how the body operates, then you could sever and separate yourself from the body of Christ and hinder the movement of the body to progress and move in the direction that God will indeed have us to go. So I'm so thankful that we have so many faithful, beautiful, loving, wonderful members of the body that are in the body and committed and faithful to help us move into the direction of our future. Would you do me a favor? Pause right there and give God some praise that you are a functioning member of the body that's willing to help and to move and progress and to help us move the church. Because the reason why they had to cut off Kunta Kinte's foot, they knew that if they cut off his foot, it would hinder his ability to be able to move. 
And I've stopped by today to help you understand by way of a sermonic title in this presentation that church members matter. Amen, somebody. I've come today to tell you that church members matter. So you're looking at me a little strange. Let's say it together. On three. One, two, three. Church members matter. One more time. Church members matter. And if you don't understand that, then you don't understand the church. By the definition itself, church is an assembly of people. Watch this. Physically. So when we need to do something to move the church in a progressive and positive and spiritual way, we have to have members that have a function, that know their function, and believe that they are a part of the body, and know that they are a necessary ingredient to help us move, then you will be committed to Christ. But if we don't have members to understand that you are indeed important, that you are indeed a vital part of this ministry and a vital part of where God has his hands on this church and is taking us, then you will neglect the very giftedness that God has given you to operate and move to help out the body progress. Isn't it unfortunate that we have people who actually are gifted? but are not operating and utilizing their gifts. And then the opposite is true as well. There are people that are gifted, but don't understand that your gifts is not about being competitive. See, that was the issue at the church at Corinth. Can I teach real quick? I got time for this. That there was an issue in the church at Corinth, there was a lot of different issues in the first six chapters. What Paul does, he deals with the issues that he had heard that they were dealing with uh, through Chloe's people when he received that information. And then by the time you get to chapter number seven, you start seeing this resounding theme at the beginning of each chapter, now concerning now concerning. They had wrote to the Apostle Paul and they had questions about certain things. So in Paul's second letter, which is really the first letter that we have in our New Testament biblical canon, but there was another letter that we found uh, in 1 Corinthians 5, 9. Don't have time. Write that down so you can understand that this is actually the second letter that we have from the Apostle Paul that they wrote him and they wanted to know some questions about some of the issues that they were dealing with. Brothers and sisters, you will be hard pressed to find a more uh, wretched church. You might as well say amen. Than the Corinthian church. They had a little bit of everything going on. They were sinning, they were divisive over who baptized who. They were divisive over gifts. They were divisive over sin. Nobody wanted to step up and say what needed to be said and they just allowed people to stay in their sins. But I'm glad I worship and serve a church that will call out sin but will still love you. Amen somebody. We want you to go to heaven and we're not going to allow you to stay in your sin and practice sin and we sit there and don't say nothing. You can't tell me you love me and won't help me. You can't tell me you love me and just let me sit up there and go to hell. Say amen when you can. And so we're going to love you enough and this generation I believe truly needs to hear this because if you cannot be corrected you cannot be helped. You have to humble yourself to let someone correct you. So brothers and sisters beloved by the time you get to chapter 12 you'll see Paul says, now concerning spiritual gifts, verse 1, brethren, I do not want you to become unaware. The word unaware there means ignorant. Because what he has to do is let them understand that they were being led by the wrong kind of spirit. But they had questions about spiritual gifts. When you talk about spiritual, the Greek term there is anuma, which is wind or breath. And it comes from God. So they had questions over spiritual gifts. And I believe people today have questions over spiritual gifts. Because everybody has gifts. But the issue was, Paul says, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that previously you have been led by the wrong spirit. Because you were led to start worshiping death and mute idols and you 
used to worship pagan gods like Aphrodite and Apollos in the city of Corinth, the capital city uh, in the Roman province, Achaia, and they were they had been previously led to worship idol gods. And Paul says that it's not the spirit of God that will cause you to say something contrary than the spirit of God if, if he was working in you would say. So a lot of times when we say things, we have to ask ourselves the question, is that of the spirit of God? Or is that of a demonic spirit? Because you cannot say it is of the spirit of God and claim yourself to be holy and so spirited and spiritual if you're saying something that's contradictory to the will and the ways and the worship of God Almighty. So Paul has to say, I just need you to understand that there's no need to be competitive. Let me say that again. There is no need to be competitive because the same spirit, somebody shout same spirit. Same. Somebody shout one spirit. one spirit. There's one spirit that produces all of the gifts. That's, it. That's why he says now there are varieties of gifts but the same spirit. They are varieties of ministries but the same Lord and they are varieties of effects. So I need you to know that whether it's the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the interpretation of tongues, the interpretation and distinguishing spirits, if it's miracles, whatever it is, it comes from the spirit of God. Verse 7 says, but to each one is given a manifestation of the spirit for the common good. Each one is given a manifestation of the spirit. Shout spirit for me, church. Amen. For the common good. Good. Verse 11 tells us that God is the one, watch this, that distributes. God is the one that distributes the measure of the Spirit so you know where your gifts come from. The problem is, you too busy looking at my gift. And you're too busy looking at somebody else's gift. And I'm too busy looking at your gift where I can't even give God praise that I have a gift. Amen, somebody. Let me see if I can illustrate it. Um, occasionally, I go to a lunch and I go down to Bardstown and I go uh, to Chipotle. Now, I like Chipotle. Uh, it's, it's somewhat healthy and it's quick, it's easy. But uh, sometimes I get those bowls. And sometimes when, when I get bowls for me and my wife and I bring them home, sometimes it looks like it's a little more... Uh, in one bowl than, 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 than another bowl. And, and my wife, she ain't tripping about it. She said, well, I give you the biggest one, but sometimes I'm in there ordering. And when I'm ordering, the lady or the man that's in front of me, they can order the same rice and chicken that I get, but it just looked like the person who gave it. <laughs> Y'all ain't helping me in this play. Just got a little more than I got. And I don't know about you, but if I'm paying the same price for what they got and mine is less, I have a little problem with that. But I want to tell you, we are just the same way in the church. We're so busy looking at somebody else's gift and we're not concerned as much about our own gift. And then you can be envious and jealous of somebody else's gift and you forget to use yours. Lean on your neighbor and say, neighbor, use yours. Go ahead. If that's the wrong neighbor, lean on the other neighbor and say, neighbor, use yours. Go ahead. Yeah, use your gift. You're so focused on the credit and the adulation and the clapping that they are getting to you forget that God has blessed you with something. Amen, somebody. That's something to shout about. And what we do is we get so messed up. Watch this in the measure of the gift. Because you don't want nobody, oh God, to have more than you when you don't determine the quantity. I am preaching much better than your responding. Where's Zaire? I need a few amens. Wake him up, please. 
So you got to check your spirit. So when you look at 1 Corinthians 12, in the BJV, the Brian Jones version, is translated, Paul is really checking their spirit. That's what he's doing. Because they're being led by the wrong spirit if they end up being competitive. Now, there's a difference between a competitive spirit versus a compassionate spirit. A competitive spirit seeks an opponent. Oh, yeah, I, I sang better than him today. You heard his prayer now. It wasn't close to mine. A competitive spirit always seeks an opponent. But a compassionate spirit seeks an opportunity. When, when, when your motives are spiritual, then your mission will be spiritual. But always remember your mission is never spiritual if your motives aren't spiritual. Because if you're not careful, you will end up wanting to use your gifts only on Sunday. Y'all better pray for me in this place. Because you want a stage and have an audience. So using your gifts then can turn into a performance. So you're utilizing the gift that God give you. And if you've got to understand, I don't know who you are or where you are mentally. I'm just trying to break down to you what Paul is trying to articulate to the Corinthians so he can help them understand that it all comes from one spirit. And if anybody is going to get credit, it needs to be God. Because God is the one that gave you the gifts through the spirit. And without the spirit giving you the gifts, you wouldn't have no gifts. And so we got to make sure we understand that we never get addicted to applause and uh, praise because let me just tell you something that will bless your life for the rest of your life if you remember it and you apply it to your life and here it is you ain't that good none of us God ain't impressed with anybody knowledge he's a sovereign God but let me help you you ain't that bad neither because there's some folks will try to make you believe and feel and think that you're worse than what you are. Amen, somebody. And I don't know about you, it's still my witness and it's still my testimony. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm, I'm glad that I'm not who I be. And if you're, not, you're glad that you're not who you used to be, would you go ahead and give God a praise in this place? God, I know you're still working on me, but I'm glad I'm not who I used to be. God, I'm not where I want to be yet, but I'm glad I'm not who I used to be. God, thank you for crafting me and molding me into who I am. Thank you. And I want you to know that the fact that God would place a gift into a wretched person like you and me. I'm going to say that one more time. Come here and lean in. That the fact that God would even deposit a gift into a wretched account. Let me say that one more time. The fact that God would deposit a spiritual gift in a ratchet account says something awesome about God. And, and that's why when you're honest about who you are, never ever have a competitive spirit. Because then you don't understand the mission of God. You will go from that. That's why I teach when I teach preaching and when I teach uh, teaching and when I teach people leading uh, in terms of uh, ministering from the pulpit, I try to help people. You have to understand that it is a blessing to preach. It's a blessing that none of us des deserve. None of us have earned. But can I tell you something? It, it, you, have, you have to do something and be faithful and spend time behind the scenes because you don't know what goes on behind the scenes. You don't know the study. You don't know the memorization. You don't know how I have to deal with counseling and helping people and praying with people and teaching classes and doing this and doing that and trying to take care of the church and take care of my family and take care of all of this. You have to actually truly be a preacher to understand and experience what it's like to be a preacher. But I don't take it for granted because it's what I prayed for. All I ever wanted to do. And I'm just telling you that because many people want the glory and the glamour of the pulpit. But don't want the experience of ministering in the pews to the people. But all they want to do is preach in the pulpit. 
but want nothing to do with the people in the pews. So before you get to the pulpit, you need to have some something to do with the people in the pews that you're preaching to in the pulpit. Because if, if that's the case, if you don't have a passion for the people in the pews, what will happen is you have a passion for the pulpit. So you'll go wherever you can get a, a pulpit. But you don't care nothing about the people in the pews. But it's the people in the pews that God wants you to have passion to preach to. Amen, somebody. But you can't preach if you don't understand the plight of the people. That's a lot of people. Pray for me. I'm sorry. There's another one. Pray for me, Brother Dorsey. So I'm just trying to help you understand that the devil messes with us because we turn our focus in the wrong place. Here's what I want to tell you today. Here it is. Please eat this. God wants members of the body of Christ to use their gifts. Oh, God wants members of the body of Christ to use your gifts. The problem in the passage or pericope is that members in Corinth were saying that they were not worthy of the body because they didn't see their gift on the level of somebody else's. Y'all hearing that on the day? So in other words, they minimized their spiritual gift because their spiritual gift paled in their minds in comparison to somebody else's spiritual gift. And that's the wrong mentality to have, and that was the problem. So what Paul has to do is he, help, he has to help them understand that, that, that the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Be because the eye has a function, and the hand has a function. But why is the eye so concerned about the hand's function that the eye has lost its ability to understand how much it is a vital role in the body? Because the hand can't do what the eye can do. And the eye can't do what the hand can do. Because God has placed them strategically, watch this, for a purpose as an individual part or member of the body. And what we got to do in the Church of Christ is we have, and I'm so thankful for all the memberships we've had in addition to the baptisms we've had lately. Let's give God some praise right now and take a five second praise break and thank God for the baptisms and the new members who place membership here. Amen. Thank you, Holy God. But the problem that we have in most congregations, beloved, in most churches is it's hard to get people to go beyond membership. So if you are comfortable with membership, you could get stagnant and never graduate to discipleship. Ooh. So we got to move you from membership to discipleship. We have to move Christians to never be satisfied with membership. You know what, what happens when people are satisfied with membership? They just happen to be a member. But, but, but have nothing in their minds about being a part of the church to utilize their gifts to help the church move. Oh, let me go deeper. Can I go deeper here real quick? The Newburgh Church of Christ, as far as I'm concerned and what I've been told and what I've heard in terms of studying the history of this great church that we're going to celebrate 63 years of ministry here in the city of Louisville in about two weeks in our homecoming. Would you do me a favor and give God glory for 63 years of blood, sweat, and tears, and love. But the Newburgh Church of Christ uh, in its infancy was birthed in the uterus of strong spiritual families who were dedicated to do the work, the ways, and the will of God. That's when the church had a sense of community. A sense, catch this, I don't know you may take issue with this word, but just, just hear me, let me explain it. A sense of ownership in terms of what I have been given stewardship over. And what we've faced in this pandemic is this. 
we cannot be satisfied with just being members of the body, but being members who don't move. Because I told you a couple of sermons ago, and by the way, this is uh, part three of our sermon series called Church Matters. Amen, somebody. And if we don't help people understand that church members matter, then you can be a defunct part of the body and be stationary and do not move. Watch this. And in not moving, being immovable and hinder the forward progression of the body. If you don't know who you are as a member. And so every member, watch this, is important. Every member should develop a sense of spiritual and congregational community. In other words, we should care about one another. Can I say that one more time in 2021? We should care about other members of the body. I got to do it one more time. I don't think y'all feel me yet. We should care about other members of the body. Because if your body members do not care for one another and all they do is fight, you don't never want something in your human body. You don't never want your heart to start having a fight with your brain. You don't want your liver and your kidneys to get into it with each other. You know what's going to happen? When they start fighting, then your human body's going to get sick. And when it gets sick, then infection sets in. And you better, be, you better hope that your white blood cells don't have a, a disagreement with your red blood cells. Because you're going to need your white blood cells to come to the rescue. Amen, somebody. And, and I just want somebody to know that the body of Christ is the same way. Not only should we get along, we should love each and every part of the body and never look at one part as being more significant than the other part. Amen, somebody. Because that is what is killing our congregations and we're at a time right now where people are still online and we thank God for our online audience please hit that share button at any time uh, if you have a Facebook account but I want you to know something that the word church itself deals with a gathering church means to assemble so I don't want nobody to think that you can be a part of a member of the church and intentionally move yourself away from it and still be faithful. Oh, okay, I know the argument. Okay, here's the argument. But Brother Jones, it worked for us in the pandemic, yeah. But assembling in person was always the primary purpose. That was primary. To protect your life and your family, the secondary option was to worship online with your family until it was safe enough to come together with our primary mode of worship, which is in person. The problem is many people, and I didn't even really come here today for this, but many people have gotten comfortable with the convenience of online, but they have no problem. You got two shots and a booster. And you could be here as a member with the body. Because if you are not here as a member of the body, when the body has a need, you don't know it. When someone is crying and down and out and needs prayer, I need a hug, need a loving heart and a loving hand, you don't know it. So you cannot assist us in the body if you have separated yourself and amputated yourself from the body. Look at your neighbor and say, he's telling the truth. Go ahead. Look at your other neighbor and say, uh, church members are important. Listen, listen. Um, years ago, I'm almost gone, praise God. Years ago, I had a hernia surgery and uh, I was a uh, former I don't know if I, I think I told y'all I was a former basketball player, played in college, had a scholarship, played in high school as well, and uh, shooting guard, just in case you want to know. And if you were to try to see me back in the day, I promise you I would drop 30 on you. You didn't want to see, you, you, you can see me now. Young brothers, you can see me now. 
but you couldn't see me about 15, 20 years ago. I was coming. But as a result of jumping and running and dunking and shooting and, and defending, I ended up um, having a hernia in my uh, waist area. And I had to have a surgery, came back from the surgery uh, in my waist area. And um, I was coming from my best friend's house and ended up having a flat tire. And um, so my friend and two other my friends, I had a spare, but I couldn't change it because I just had a hernia, so I couldn't lift anything. I could barely even move. I still had some crutches and everything, so they had to come and assist me with my need. There are things in the church that Wi-Fi won't help with. You couldn't change my tire online. And I want to say this, and God knows that I'm saying this with all the love in my heart, that the primary way of assembly for God's people is to assemble in person. For those who are immunocompromised, for our elderly, we ain't even talking to you. We want you to do what you need to do and stay there, and we don't want you to be compromised. I'm talking about the folks who got two shots, three shots, four shots, five shots, six shots, 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 mass, 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 distancing, distancing, distancing. But you have chosen out of comfort and convenience not to assemble and what you don't realize and maybe even some of you here who only come once a, a month once or twice I'm happy you're here but I want to encourage you beloved to come more and assemble more because you are indeed a vital part of the body now we're doing good Newberg. We're doing good. We have all of these ministries, and I'm so thankful for ministries like the audiovisual, the worship team, the grief team, the evangelism team, the new member team, and we got uh, the seniors, and we got all of this stuff going on, and, and the dare to care, and we have all of these ministries, Brother Duncan's class on Thursday, evangelism on Tuesday, and all of these different classes, and we're doing good, but if we had more people assembling, if we had more people assembling, we it would grow, it would grow just your energy, just your face, just you being there, just you inviting people, just you helping and, and bringing people that you know, just your involvement. That's what a church needs. Church members matter. So it's not that we are not doing good, as a matter of fact, we're doing excellent at this church considering the pandemic conditions. But I'm the kind of preacher, I'm the kind of minister where I'm thinking about how much more? How much more could we do? How much more could we be? What could God do if all of God's children came with a smile, came with some love, came with some energy, amen somebody, came with a Bible study. How many more people could we save? How many more people could we baptize? Maybe we could baptize somebody that has a gun and is ready to shoot somebody on the west side, amen somebody, on the south side, on the east side, over at Newburgh. Maybe if we got out together, we could eradicate some of the violence, some of the corruption, some of the wickedness here in Louisville, but you got to understand you are a vital, important part of God's church. And if we can assemble, then we're defeating the purpose of being in the body of Christ. You may be afoot. And if you're afoot in the body, and your foot, and you cut off. Y'all ain't ready for this today. And don't even have me talk about those who intentionally disconnect. And you know how we are as human beings. Down through man's anthropological existence, we are masters at having a good excuse. Lean on your neighbor and just shout, good excuse, good excuse, good excuse. Some of y'all was already mad anyway. And the pandemic was just icing on your uh, critiquing in your tank. <laughs> a 
Oh, are y'all y'all okay this morning? I'm just trying to help you understand that we have too many WMDs in the church. Weapons of ministry destruction. Because we don't understand one phone call, one attendance, and I'm, listen, y'all pray for me. Uh, pray for me and my wife. I'm telling you, listen, do you know how hard it is to be a preacher, uh, to be a hugger, and can't hug y'all? I did not know how powerful a hug was until I couldn't get none from the church. It, it is a non- verbal experience where you connect spiritually and emotionally and the writing on your heart says as you hug I care about you do you know how many people in this pandemic have felt like nobody cared about them and then God has already given us a family called the church that we care for one another, but we haven't had that. So, um, uh, Sister Eubanks, you're going to have to pray for me because um, I haven't been a good, I haven't been good lately because I've been, I've been hugging members lately because I just, it, and it's like I want to help, but sometimes all you can do is just grab them. That's why I can't wait till this pandemic is halfway over. Anybody know when this thing is fully over, you're going to embrace somebody at the New World Church of Christ. You're going to run to them. Amen. You're going to give them a great big old hug and just say, I care about you. I love you. That's what church is about. And if we can't take care of our own members, what does it say about us by taking care of spiritual business outside of the assembly? And so I just want you to understand something powerful about this whole deal. So I want to give you two things and I'm gone. Here it is. Number one, we must understand, beloved, that you have to use your spiritual gifts. And you do that when your mission is spiritual. Somebody shout mission is spiritual. Oh, beloved, the spiritual mission of the church is to edify one another. The spiritual mission of the church is to give God glory through the use of your gifts. Don't be looking at mine and I can't be looking at yours and I'm not worried about if you got more than I have and you looking at mine to see if you have more than me. It is never about that because God is the one who measures the gifts and distributes the gifts. Stop looking at somebody else's gift. Lean on your neighbor and say, stop looking at their gifts. Yeah. You can't come to worship. Some folks can't come to worship because they're competing with somebody. And here's what I found about in my own life. I had folk competing with me that I didn't even know. You, you got people competing with you that you don't even know who they are. One of the things that the uh, pandemic has birthed at the Newburgh Church is an online presence. And I want us to know that God has a way of positively using negative things for his glory. Did you hear that? God can take some bad and make something good out of it. And we know. And we know. And we know God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. God knows how to take something bad and make something good out of it. Amen, somebody. And if you never ever needed proof or evidence of that, go home and look in your mirror because God knows how to take something bad and make something good out of it. Amen, somebody. And so we got to make sure that we use our gifts when there is a need. So you got to have... Uh, a mindset that is um, spiritual and your mission has to be spiritual and your mindset has to be spiritual. So mission has to be spiritual. Mindset has to be spiritual. And when we say spiritual is you have to know, am I, do, am I doing with my spiritual gifts? Am I doing this for my glory or for my God? <laughs> and that's the question we all have to ask because the problem in Corinth was the fact that many of these um, Corinthian believers uh, they were in prosperity 
They were in a capital city that, that was immersed with commerce. They were wealthy, they were intelligent, they were smart. And for some of us who actually have degrees, oh, y'all quiet, I got you now. For some of you who have degrees, we can't see ourselves doing things that we believe in our mind that may be beneath our secular status. Oh, we'll let somebody else do that. Yeah, I got a degree. But see, that's the problem. That's the problem. You look at that as being a minuscule, myopic task instead of addressing the needs of the church. And if you don't use your gifts from God, God knows how to take your gifts and give it to somebody who will be willing to use them. Lean on your never say, use your gifts. Go ahead. Use your gifts. And, and, and that was the problem with Cain and Abel. Because they both had an offering, but God accepted Cain, excuse me, Abel's offering and disregarded Cain's. So why did Cain kill Abel? Because he represented something that he didn't have. His brother represented something that Cain didn't have. Abel represented something that Cain wanted but did not have and was not willing to work towards. And we can be the same way in the church. We can metaphorically kill somebody and not be willing to work hard as they did to develop their gift so that they can glorify God like that person is glorifying God. Amen, somebody. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to be saved because your gift was so good. You're not going to be saved because you were so smart. You're going to be saved because of the grace of God. Is there anybody in this place right now that knows the only way you're going to be saved is because of the grace of Almighty God? That's why it does not make no sense to sit up there and be so cold and callous where you can't clap. Be so sanctified and sedity uh, as if you can't sing or shout. To be so puffed up and, and so proper and have so much pride that you can't give God some praise. To be so anointed where you can't shout amen. I need some people in here that's willing to go ahead and give God some praise. You don't care what nobody on your pew has saying about you. You know what God has done for you in my life. I'm willing to praise God. Praise you God. Thank you God for what you've done for me in my life. Jesus says if these don't praise, the rocks will cry out. So he wants praise. He wants you to connect with the fact that where he has taken your life from where you were to where you are right now. He wants you to connect with the fact that you need to know that you can always have hope. He's demonstrated throughout the whole course of your life that he will be there for you. He will help you in your time of need. He will assist you with your struggle. He will bless you to get beyond your shortcomings and your disruptions in your life. He has kept you, kept you away from accidents, kept you on planes, trains, and automobiles, allowed you to get home safe, back to your family, back to your children, back to your church. Open up your mouth and shout thank you. Thank you, God. If I couldn't do nothing else, I could come to church just to say thank you. I don't have to wait to church but to tell them thank you. I don't have to wait to Monday to tell them thank you. I don't have to wait to the communion portion of worship to say thank you. I don't have to wait till the brother gets up there and pray to say thank you. I can just look back over my life I can look back over my life and say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Anybody here can look back over your life and give him glory? How in the world did you make it, God? How in the world did he keep you, God? How in the world did he bless you, God? Y'all need to tear the roof off this place and give God glory. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my mama. Thank you for my church. Thank you for this family. Stand to your feet. We need you. We need you. 
If you knew how bad we needed you as a church family, you have a unique set of skills, gifts, talents, and abilities. Don't harden your heart for what happened 20 years ago. Don't harden your heart for what happened 30 years ago. Some people mad because they ain't even called my name. You know, my granddaddy or parents are the one who chartered the church and they don't even never call our name out. I ain't going back. And, and, and we have, the devil will use all of these cunning and crafty ideas to cause you to criticize the church. I'm telling you something, man. Hit me now. I'm going to let you go. But one thing I, you, you can't do to me, don't mess with my wife. Don't do that. Love me enough to come to me. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it, but don't mess with my wife. And I know how I feel, bro, wise. And I know how you feel. And bro, Fleming, I know how you feel about your wife. So don't you ever mess with nobody's wife. And if we have a wife, God don't want you to mess with his wife. And let me remind some of you that that's the church. Be careful what you say about his wife. Be careful what you say about his wife. Because the same way you look at somebody saying something about your wife is the same way that God looks at it. And so we are better together if we are going to electric slide into 2022. Y'all gotta come on in here. We need everybody who's a member of this church on the dance floor. Yeah, we need you. Our watch night service should be jammed. Yeah. Because we understand how important we are as a people. Your kids are watching you, beloved. They're seeing how you either model or do not model Christianity. Your grandchildren are looking at you, seeing whether or not you listen to the preaching. You pay attention to whether you're on your phone looking like you're on a Bible app, but you're really surfing Facebook. Or playing a game. And you wonder why your children or grandchildren don't pay attention. They are looking at what they see modeled. <laughs> Beloved, um, I want to give an invitation for somebody to come now. Jesus died so that you can be a member of his church. There's only one way to get into the church that Jesus hung, bled, and died for. And you gotta get into that church the same way the Bible says you must get into it. Because you cannot choose the way you get into his church. He tells you the method that you have to, in the process you have to go through to get into his church. The first time the gospel was preached, 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, the apostle Peter said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you. Nobody is exempt from repentance and baptism. But the problem in Christianity is people don't teach that. And if people don't teach that the way God, uh, Holy Spirit taught that, then you can be confused because you do know that the devil wants you to do things that are in Scripture but not the way Scripture uh, prescribes. Hmm. So repent. Repent and be baptized for what reason for the remission the forgiveness of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy spirit the first time that was preached the bible says about three thousand souls were baptized in water the same day and the bible says in verse number 47 of acts 2 the lord added them to the church he added them to the body of christ and in first corinthians 12 18 says, and I'm about to let you sit down in just a moment, but 1 Corinthians 12, 18 says that God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desires. God prepares you for where he wants to place you. You're here today because God wants to place somebody in the body of Christ. Hear me, kids. Hear me, young boys, young girls. Adults, if you want to be saved, you got to believe Jesus died for your sins. He rose from the dead and he got up from the grave. You got to believe that with all of your heart till you die or Christ comes back. Make up your mind. You are a sinner. 
You're going in the wrong direction. Repentance means I'm changing my mind and I'm going to have a change of behavior. You've got to be willing to be baptized so that God can give you the freedom and the flexibility to know that I'm freed from the guilt of my sins. He gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit so that you can know what you ought to do in the body of Christ as you move and operate with us. I want you to come down to the front two rows if you need to be baptized today and be added to the body of Christ. And for those of you who are members of the Newburg Church of Christ and the Newburg Nation, and you know that you have been amputated, you have been disconnected, you have looked at other gifts, I want you to repent today. Make up your mind, I'm not looking at nobody else's gift. I don't care how good he can sing, she can sing, he can preach, he can teach. It does not matter. Use your gifts. Help us grow this church. Help us save these souls. Help us go out. And it's, it does not matter what you do just on Sunday. You got to be a 24-7 Christian. Use your gifts outside of the assembly. Not just when we're in church. So if you need to respond to the master, we want you to come and either repent of your sins. Or if you are not a child of God, come get baptized right now. And so that you can be forgiven of all your sins as Omari comes. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, why don't you God bless you. give God bless you. my humble cry? Do you need to come get baptized? Do you need to come get baptized? And why do you come?
now concerning that of our responses to today's message. Please be in prayer for Sister Lisa Harris, Sister Janice Talley, Sister Janice Means White, and for Brother Derek Woodmore. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. We don't speak at this time, my sister. We go into a word of prayer. Okay. And it's just the way the men's elders got set up. Okay. Uh, we pray on your behalf. Thank you, my sister. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to say thank you for this day. We thank you for the message of the hour. We thank you for the blessings of those who have come and responded. And may you stop at each individual family that asked a request and honor of you this day. We pray for them collectively. That's right. That's you know what they stand in need of. Yeah. And we worship together with them this day. Yeah. And may our prayers go beyond these four walls. Yeah. Yeah. Guide us and protect us. Let us do things decently and in order. Yeah. Yeah. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now concerning the Lord's Supper. If you're in need of a communion cup, please raise your hand. One of our four esteemed ushers will provide to you a cup for the Lord's Supper by way of communion for the next phase of the service. And at the conclusion of partaking of the Lord's Supper, please hold your cups, place them back inside the plastic bag, and dispose of them in the foyer garbage can, please. Let them not leave in the seats. Let them not leave on the floor. Please take them and throw them away on your way out of the assembly. Concerning the Lord's Supper, we'll be taken from the book of Luke, chapter number 22, starting at the 14th verse through 20. And when the hour was come, he sat down in the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I supper. For I say unto you, I will not eat any more thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine till the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup, after supper, saying, this cup is of the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Prayer for the Lord's Supper. O God of excellence, grace, and mercy, we thank you for your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ. And this act that we do in recognizing him yeah. by giving up his life on the tree of Calvary for man's sins. That's right. Lord, may you bless this bread and this cup, which yeah. shall shed blood. Yeah. May we take it with clean hands, pure hearts, yeah. looking to the cross as the example. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, the Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
locations as you enter and exit the sanctuary. Again, we certainly want to thank all of you and know you have a blessing coming every time you give. The Lord Jesus said it is more blessed to give than to receive. We have an example of our giving found in 2 Corinthians 9 and verse number 6. Paul says, now this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do just as he has purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let's give God some uh, hallelujah praise right now. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Forgiven. Because people have gave throughout these 63 years. This church has been blessed, and I do mean the members and the community uh, here in Newburgh has been blessed because of what it is that you and I do. Let's go to God in prayer for Thanksgiving. God, we thank you now, Lord, for all that you've done these past 63 years, particularly here over the last 21 months, oh God. You've kept this church, you've allowed the members to have resources where they can give, and we wanna thank you for that. We thank you for the roof, the shelter, the clothes, the food, the water, the love, the kindness, the salvation. Lord, Lord, we owe it all to you. Lord, we pray that you bless every dime, every penny, every nickel, and that you bless it and breathe on it, oh God, so we can apply it in the right place in this church. And those who have that responsibility would do so, so that we could sustain this church, sustain this ministry, and save more souls. Lord, we thank you so much. Continue to provide for us. Continue to give towards us. And help us be mindful to be cheerful as we give so that you know in our hearts that we love you. And we thank you for the ability to give because it feels so good, oh God. We thank you now. Bless us uh, even more, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 That concludes the offering. Uh, we have several people on our prayer request. We certainly want you to continuously pray uh, for them. It is a privilege to pray. Amen. It is a privilege to pray. And anytime someone asks you to pray for them, what they're saying is, I am confident in your ability to communicate with God on my behalf that God would move in my situation. 
And so I'm thankful for all the prayer warriors and the intercessors that we have at this great church. Please be mindful to keep all of those members in prayer. Uh, we certainly want to pray for them daily. Many are going through bereavement, procedures, healing, uh, job stuff, uh, money stuff, relationship stuff, kids stuff, just emotional stuff, mental stuff. Amen, somebody. Uh, we all got some stuff going on. So let's pray for everybody every day. Um, today is a monumental day of the year. We have uh, Surviving the Holidays Grief Share Ministry. This is the second time our grief ministry, Sister Randall, Sister Duffy, and uh, Brother Larry Sanders have conducted this, and they're doing this ministry to help people who are struggling with the loss of a loved one via recently or in the past, and it's difficult for you to get through the holiday period when you're supposed to be with family. So what we want to do is please get in contact with one of us today or one of them so that they can give you the information to log on. It's today at 4 o'clock, right, Brother Sanders? And um, it's going to be on Zoom, and they want you to be on this just to help you um, get through and survive the holidays and deal with grief healthily. Thankful today for our food pantry. Uh, clap for the Dare to Care Food Pantry Ministry, everybody. Amen, amen. Brother uh, Clark, uh, Sister Hannon, Sister Pearson, Sister Dolman, her sister, uh, Sister Malone, all those who come uh, every Friday to pass out food. And I want you to know that your church is doing that. Yeah, Newburgh is doing that. We're providing this community with food and we're restocking our pantry. So we want to thank all of you who've been a part of that and we're helping people in this community, and we're gonna get some souls that's gonna be saved because they thought that God was sending him, them here for food, but God was really sending him for their soul, amen. Uh, don't forget about the transportation ministry. If you need a ride, please call us. Um, two weeks, we have our church anniversary mortgage payoff. We're right, amen, give God glory for that. I, I hope you get excited about it, amen. We're, we're right at $40,000. And we decided to do this in December, I believe it was, Brother Dorsey, of last year. And we committed to doing it because we wanted to get the funds needed to be debt free. We are saving some money by paying it off early. And our mortgage, I just go ahead and tell you, our mortgage is $8,000 a month. So we'll be saving $96,000 a year that we don't have to pay out. Amen, somebody. I'm just transparent like that. I'm just going to tell you. And I know we, we'll, we'll have a congregational meeting and we'll talk about all these things and we'll be very open and transparent with you. But it is a monumental time in the history of this church to have given a penny or a dollar to contribute to paying off our mortgage. Uh, I'm, I'm a history person, so uh, so many people, uh, I don't know who did that quilt out there uh, in the hallway. Sister who? To the premise, okay, and it's a beautiful quilt. But I, I'm, I'm, I love to look at it as I go to my office and see those families that used to go here, that are no longer here, that that had the vision that one day Newburgh will be what it is today, and they had their blood, sweat, and tears. Your dad, your mom, brother Baker, and um, the Fleming's been here for 18 years, and blood, sweat, and tears, and all the preachers, all the members, all the Sunday school teachers, all the Duncans, all of the McKinneys, all of the families, amen somebody, all of the games, and everybody, that all these years that, that did all they could because they loved the church. We're redeveloping community here at Newburgh, and we need everybody to be together, but let's do all we can. Uh, we're gonna, we pushed you enough, we pushed you enough to know how important it is. So for those of you who want to help us, now it's a, it, that can happen a few different ways. Now for some of y'all ballers, <laughs> y'all still with me? Some of y'all ballers, you just, you, know, you just want to get a tax write off for your business? <laughs> Drop a couple thousand? Listen, you're going to get blessed if you give. Amen to somebody. So I, I just still believe, I'm one of them people, I believe all the way to the end, Walter. <laughs> right?
right to the end, I'm just, I'm just believing it's going to happen. So do what you can um, to help us and thank God for all of those who've already paid your 285. Let's give God some glory for everybody who's already paid their 285 and more and more and more to help us. God bless you. Thank you so much. Today we're celebrating Brother Vaden as our senior member spotlight. Give God some glory for Brother Robert Vaden. I tease him every Sunday. I said, Brother Vaden, man, you, you got your handkerchief and your bow tie combination on me and just showing out every Sunday. I told him, man, you can't be looking better than the preacher. But he's seeing every Sunday. Amen, amen, amen. How long have you had your membership at Newburgh? Uh, I've been a member since March 2001, March 4th, when I was baptized. Amen. What do you love like most about the Newburgh Church of Christ? The family atmosphere? Favorite Bible verse, Song of Solomon. Okay. Okay, I know what that means. You love somebody, praise God. <laughs> Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1 through 6, ministry pastoring. He is an usher. Hobby table games. What are you most thankful to God for? The breath that he gave me and dying for our sins so that we may have the right to the tree of life. Give God glory. So Brother Vane, God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, we have a youth spotlight today. We want to spotlight Sister Dynasty more. Would you go crazy? Dynasty, wave your hand like you're in a parade right now. Amen. Amen. How old are you and what school do you attend? I am 17 years old and I go to Southern High School. Favorite pop read, I like this, doing hair. That's what we used to call it back, back in the day, but now it's like they got fancy words for it. But Dynasty just kept it simple, just doing hair, amen. What is your most uh, recent accomplishment? Starting a new job at UPS, amen. What are your future plans for the future? Go to cosmetology. I told you that was a big word that they call it. Cosmetology <laughs> school, right? Okay. And college to get a business degree and open my own salon. She has an entrepreneurial spirit. Amen. Amen. Get this. What are you most, what's the most valuable lesson you have learned? I won't get anywhere with fear, but with faith and believing I can. I will accomplish and overcome anything that comes my way. Give God glory. God bless you, Dynasty. We're proud of you. We're proud of you. Our canned food drive is on again next week. We're going to uh, be collecting peas uh, next week. So we want to thank all of you for your green beans and your corn and your soup on today. And next week, we're going to be collecting canned peas. So, And we're also accepting donations for the canned food drive to restock for Dare to Care. Don't forget about part four next week. Uh, this coming Thursday is Thanksgiving. And we're going to be giving thanks here for those who will be here and in town. Uh, at 11 a.m., we're going to have our Thanksgiving Day service. About an hour of service, we're going to have our elders there, and um, some of you will be there, and we're going to have a good time. And uh, Brother Kenneth Ray will be our guest speaker on this coming Thursday at 11 a.m. here at the Newburgh Church of Christ in person. Next week, we're calling it Harvest Time, uh, and my sermon title is You Reap What You Sow. So we're looking forward to part four of Church Matters next week. And don't forget our homecoming is in two weeks. We're going to have a Saturday concert at 5 p.m. December the 4th and De December 5th. That Sunday, we're going to have guest speaker, Brother Alvin Daniels from the Hope Church of Christ in Miami, Florida. Friend of mine who's coming and Brother Dexter Smith from Indianapolis is going to be our guest worship leader. And they're going to be com combining together to bless us. And then we're going to have our mortgage burning ceremony immediately following. We're going to get into some food stuff, plates, and we'll tell you about that uh, on next week. And we're going to have a good time where you can take pictures and do all kinds of things. So uh, we have a committee for that. And we're just grateful. And anybody excited about our homecoming is me. Y'all excited about it? All right. I'm excited. Don't forget about the Midwest Church of Christ. They have a... Uh, wreath making event starting at 12 p.m. on December 4th. Please contact uh, their church if you would like to be a part of that. I want to thank all of you for being here with us today. 
Uh, we want to thank all of our visitors. Please put your hands together one more time just for our visitors. And thank you so much for being with us. Amen. God bless you. And at this time, we're going to ask Brother Floyd Sisk III to come give us a closing prayer. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, that we was able to come out and worship you in truth and in spirit. Lord, we want to pray and ask of you, Lord, and seek your faith, Lord, that we would abide in faith, that we would continue, Lord, in hope, in your word, in your truth, your promises. Also, Lord, that we would walk in love with one another. And Lord, do your will. Also, Lord, as you have given us gifts of the Spirit, Lord, to glorify you in this world. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we want to praise you and honor you. That's right. And keep the faith, 